But like we did last night, we begin with more changes in Major League Lacrosse. It seems there will be some new head coaching faces for the league's 20th season, and another owner is out of the fold. We've learned that Blaze owner Andre Gujar, no longer an owner in the league, he took over the organization prior to the 2018 season, bringing an influx of energy to the team. Gujar, a driving force for some of the new helmets, alternate all orange jerseys for the franchise as well. Gujar is the second owner to leave MLL this offseason. Bayhawks owner Brendan Kelly told multiple media outlets that he is no longer with the league. Neither of those moves have been confirmed by Major League Lacrosse, but they did refer us to this statement released yesterday about the 2020 season, saying in 2020, MLL will operate under a unified ownership group that is capitalized for growth. Incorporated in the strategic plan is the relocation of select teams, thus streamlining the league and creating the greatest opportunity for additional investment. Well, it's been reported that the Atlanta Blaze are one of the teams being relocated and wherever the Blaze are playing this summer, Liam Banks will not be their head coach. He announced that on his Instagram today. Banks spent the last two seasons as Blaze head coach, also being associated with the franchise when it first began in Atlanta back in 2016. He stated, it's with a heavy heart that I would like to announce that I am stepping down from coaching the Atlanta Blaze MLL. I want to thank the players, the fans, and the Blaze organization for the opportunity to lead this team for the last two years. I have poured my heart into the growth of lacrosse in Atlanta, and it has been extremely special having a pro team in Atlanta for the past four years. Thank you to all the people who supported the franchise, and especially the people who have always been hashtag all in. We've got Liam Banks joining us now. Liam, obviously the team moving out of Atlanta is probably one of the biggest things that goes into this. For you, what, how sad is it knowing that you were part of this organization at the very beginning and to see it leave Atlanta, a spot that means so much to you? Yeah, Travis, thanks. Uh, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, you know, there's two ways to look at it. It, it is very sad, right? Uh, you know, we had a great going we have a excellent roster with the Atlanta Blaze uh, you know I thought we were making incredible strides uh, not only on field but uh, started to make it in the community um, but at the end of the day Atlanta was just not a spot that uh, Major League Lacrosse was going to be uh, for the uh, foreseeable future so um, you know to me as opposed to looking at it as a sad thing I kind of reminisced and, and, and look back a little bit on all the great things that we were able to accomplish here um, you know, we were a part of bringing Major League Lacrosse here, hosting championship games here, and and ultimately having a team for for four years. And uh, you know, the end result of that is the ignition that it gave to the Atlanta community. And that's really why I was in it to to help grow lacrosse in in the state of Georgia, and particularly in Atlanta. And you know, I think the Blaze uh, served that purpose in helping kids to see you know what lacrosse could be for them in the future. And uh, so my perspective on it. Now, it hasn't been an easy journey. It's been, been many years. I've been in pro lacrosse, uh, trying to make this uh, work for, for a lot of years, and most recently on the coaching side, which is so enjoyable. So, you know, I'm going to look back at it with more fond memories than, than any bitterness and appreciate the opportunity that we had to showcase the best lacrosse in the world to uh, lacrosse fans and sports fans in Atlanta. Uh, obviously, you reach the highest of levels as a player, but I wonder having the opportunity to coach some of the best athletes the sport has to offer through Major League Lacrosse, what that meant to you and what that challenge was like. Yeah, it was it was really, really special. And, and I think you nailed down the head. It is a challenge. And I think any time... Uh, uh, you're a person who likes to compete and, and, and enjoys a challenge, uh, you know, you embrace that. And, and uh, it was a challenge for us, uh, you know, first year coming in, uh, learning a lot about professional players, who they were, uh, both on field and as people, was, was a great learning experience. And I and, uh, thought we had some great momentum into, uh, you know, after our first year. And obviously the exodus of players into into the PLL uh, brought uh, around a new challenge. And, uh you know, it was fun last year putting together uh, what we put together. Uh, you know, in all reality, I put together, you know, our 2018 team first, our 2019 team, and I think you got a, a one goal game. So, uh, you know, I enjoy uh, both challenges being different in, in each year. Uh, I, I learned a lot about uh, uh, 
Canadian lacrosse from, from the influx of Canadians we had last year. Uh, soaked up a lot listening to Pat March and the way he runs offenses uh, uh, this past year. Learned from, you know, our other assistant, Todd Francis. So I take it all as a learning experience. Um, you know, I, I feel like at, at some other point, uh, there'll be opportunities to, to coach at a high level that makes sense for me. And I'll just take all the experience I had from the last two years and try and make myself a better coach. Through all that, and obviously the turmoil of uh, there are reports of where the team might be, but, but nothing confirmed yet. W was there a part of you that no, no matter where that team was going to be, you wanted to, to, to try to still coach at that level because of everything we talked about? Or was it just not the right fit for you? You know, I think coaching at that level uh, is something I'll always aspire to do. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, I came into uh, Major League Lacrosse as a as a head coach to to work for Andre Goodger, the the former owner of the Blaze, and and uh, uh, you know, I would follow that guy anywhere. Uh, I'll continue to work for him within uh, lacrosse industry, taking some of the things that uh, we've developed over the course of the last two years and invested in and and bring those to the lacrosse in industry and better lacrosse uh, from that standpoint. But, um, you know, I think once Andre uh, w was out, um, you know, it really changed my perspective on, on things. You know, a guy who came into this league with a ton of energy, uh, influx of cash, and, and uh, after two years, uh, kind of looked at the situation, found that it wasn't right. Uh, it also uh, was an opportunity for me to step back uh, professionally, look at it. And, and at the end of the day, I would love to coach in in the MLL, but uh, uh, logistically and, and just the whole uh, uh, future plan that was put in front of uh, my face uh, didn't really align with uh, uh, where I want to move on in, in years to come. Well, uh, Liam, you got plenty of other things going on in the lacrosse community. We appreciate all the time that you've given us over the last uh, several years. You've, you've always been great to us. We appreciate it. And uh, good luck with everything you have going on. And, and go Orange. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Travis, keep up all your good work. I think it's so important for for uh, you guys as media. I think you're doing a really nice job of, of covering the real stories that are, that are out there. And that's going to be important for the advancement of the game, transparency and in, in, uh, pro lacrosse, college lacrosse, all levels of lacrosse and guys working together. And, and you and, and some other guys out there along social media are doing a great job of bringing uh, stories that are important to the forefront. So I appreciate it. And you're right. I'm going to be on the girls across trail this summer, hanging out with my daughter, doing some recruiting, coaching my son and, and uh, you know, obviously helping out our LB3 program uh, uh, whenever I can, but I'm excited about the future with Andre Goodger and some of the things that, that we're going to do because you got a guy who's committed to, to lacrosse. And uh, um, as you know, Travis, let, let, why don't we try to get together, uh, up in the Carrier Dome and, and root on those orange 20 year anniversary of the 2000 National Championship. So should be a fun year of lacrosse. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch that team play and uh, enjoy some of the, the time away from from professional lacrosse this summer. Liam, appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks so much. Have a great day. Good stuff. All right. Meanwhile, the Bayhawks will also have a new coach as Dave Cottle is stepping down. That was first reported by college lacrosse's Chris Jastrzemski. It has since been confirmed by the league. Cottle was the Bayhawks head coach for the last two seasons, helping Chesapeake win the 2019 MLL title. He was also the team's head coach from 2012 to 2015, winning a pair of championships then as well. But the team isn't going far to find Cottle's replacement. Assistant coach Tom Mariano will be taking over as the head coach and general manager. It will not be Mariano's first head coaching gig in Major League Lacrosse. Also served as the head coach of the Florida Launch in 2017 and 2018. Led the franchise to its one and only playoff appearance. All this Bayhawks news <coughs> comes on the heels of owner Brendan Kelly saying he's giving his ownership stake back to the league and of course the MLL announcing that unified ownership structure where there are no longer be owners of individual franchises.